Hello, welcome again to another of our sessions of digital slide review and sign out. We have some interesting cases to share with you. This is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which comes to you from the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Our case today is uh, from the realm of GYN pathology. And the patient is an elderly woman who presented with a mass protruding from the cervical os. How is this was very accessible. <clears throat> Superficial samples were obtained and sent to pathology. And these showed what appeared to be a high grade spindle cell neoplasm, not particularly remarkable for uh, differentiation, uh, negative for smooth muscle markers, uh, but positive with a TP53 mutation as manifested by overexpression of uh, P53 immunohistochemistry. So our thoughts at that time was that this may well be uh, given the patient's age, a uh, uh, carcinosarcoma or similar such uh, neoplasm, but obviously uh, further investigation was warranted. Well, what should we think about when we think of uh, spindle cell lesions arising from the uterine corpus and protruding or herniating in through the muscle, through the uh, os? Well, obviously the most frequent things are smooth muscle tumors uh, or endometrial polyps. Uh, but sarcomatoid carcinomas, uh, mixed mullerian tumors, endometrial stromal sarcomas, even becomas uh, can occur in this situation. An adenosarcoma with sarcomatous overgrowth certainly could present in this manner as well, as might uh, adenomyoma or other uh, st uh, stromal neoplasms. So the differential was still fairly broad, despite the fact that we had observed what appeared to be high-grade malignancy. So the patient came to hysterectomy and uh, the sample was opened, revealing this rather broad-based polypoid structure in the endometrium uh, arising from the uh, endometrium and lower uterine segment. And here you can see what um, at low power looks very much like a fairly typical endometrial polyp. So uh, is that where we should stop? Well, I think this case illustrates uh, the value of uh, uh, a little higher magnification at times uh, rather than just rapid dismissal. And what are the clues here at low magnification that might tell you to do that? Well, one clue is these sort of uh, linear, somewhat compressed uh, glandular structures with a little bit of uh, leafing, leafing or tufting to them. Um, so these glands here uh, should suggest to you that there may be something going on in the stroma. Um, at low magnification like this, scanning magnification, you can't see much else, and the stroma looks fairly bland because it's quite pink, not very cellular. Uh, typical uh, glandular luminal mu mucin is uh, observed here. But as we come into a little higher magnification, I think you can begin to see that there's a little bit of stromal condensation around some of these glandular structures. Um, and even here uh, where it's uh, still quite pink, uh, I think you may be able to see that there's just a little bit of heterogeneity, a little bit of randomness to the uh, stroma here. Uh, so as we come into higher magnification, of course, the cat's out of the bag. You begin to see uh, some atypical cells here uh, in this stroma. And this sort of architecture with uh, bland uh, glandular elements and atypical stromal cells uh, should raise consideration of a low-grade adenosarcoma. We'll look here at the <clears throat> deeper tissues and uh, take a look at some of these more cellular, slightly more cellular areas here. And here I think you can see, again, still some atypia um, occasionally we might find mitotic figures, uh, certainly some pycnotic cells, um, a degree of atypia that really should not be here in the stroma. So again, consideration for adenosarcoma low grade uh, in this sort of an appearance. Um, the differential being with a typical uh, either um, endometrial polyp or possibly an adenomyoma or something of that sort. Here we can see more of this atypia, fairly mild, but certainly uh, not 
the usual stromal cells, some binucleation, some horseshoe sacred cells, some nuclear enlargement. So, uh, of course, you don't uh, do your evaluation on a hysterectomy with a single slide, so we have other slides. And here we see, again, this uh, pattern, uh, quite distinct from the underlying myometrium, uh, more low-grade appearing areas, but then some more cellular areas. Uh, and then the tissue that's sort of protruding from the os and uh, producing this hemorrhagic necrosis. So we'll take a look here and we can see um, a quite cellular stroma here, again with this sort of compressed slit-like or phylloides-like uh, pattern of uh, gland. Um, and again, quite cellular stroma, uh, looking maybe a little bit more high grade uh, with uh, occasional mitotic figures, um, more nuclear atypia uh, in these cells here. So just to sort of pan around on this and let you see uh, the pattern of cellularity and obviously the overlying epithelium is quite bland. Low cuboidal, maybe slight nuclear enlargement, sort of more typical, maybe uh, ciliated metaplasia type of cells. Um, and obviously not every gland is so involved. So some areas uh, still have the very low grade atypia. Other areas are showing a higher grade of uh, stromal proliferation um, that may indicate that we're seeing some evolution of this tumor over uh, time. Now we'll come over here to the more um, high grade area, the more the even more uh, bluish area, and uh, see that here uh, we see again stromal atypia, condensation around these benign glandular structures, um, and uh, the beginnings of uh, sort of a more stromal, pure stromal proliferation uh, in this setting. Again, we see uh, mitotic activity and low-grade atypia. Here it's becoming even more cellular um, and we begin to see uh, some atypical mitotic figures uh, in some of these areas such as this. Uh, down here another mitotic figure. Uh, some tripolar uh, variations and certainly uh, rounded ones. So uh, quite a bit more mitotically active in this uh, setting. So uh, where did this high-grade sarcoma-only pattern come from? Well, as we got to the very tip of the polyp towards the uh, uh, cervical os, we found this appearance, and we'll rotate this a bit here so that we can uh, distinguish things a little bit more normally. Um, and here we see this low-grade pattern of uh, adenosarcoma. And then as we look up here, we see that this component of the tumor has entirely lost any evidence of uh, glandular differentiation. Uh, there are no residual glands here. And um, we have a pure um, spindle cell proliferation, mesenchymal uh, appearance uh, with high cellularity, uh, some atypia and pleomorphism um, and fairly active uh, growth uh, in this uh, component of the tumor. So um, we made the diagnosis based on this component and the other features that we've seen of Mullerian adenosarcoma with sarcomatous overgrowth. Uh, this is a defined category within the uh, rubric of Mullerian adenosarcoma, which typically is seen as a phylloides type uh, glandular epithelium with or, or sort of pattern of glandular epithelium with uh, underlying very cellular stroma and varying degrees of atypia, as we have seen in this case. These are usually adult women, but can cover a rather broad age range, including pre- and postmenopausal women. The three uh, main categories uh, that are sort of useful to think about in this situation 
is those with uniformly low-grade sarcomatous component, and these can be difficult to distinguish from other benign processes. Uh, High-grade sarcomatous component, uh, which uh, can be uh, maybe concerning for um, uh, mixed uh, tumors such as uh, uh, botryoid uh, sarcomas and so forth, and those where you have a mixture of a more low-grade and sarcomatous overgrowth, which is defined generally as more than 25% of the tumor uh, showing this uh, feature. Now, staging and uh, hence prognosis in these situations are based both on the uh, grading, uh, but more particularly on the depth of invasion. Those that are confined to the uh, endometrium or exophytic, which many of them are, uh, may have a relatively good prognosis, whereas as you begin to become invasive, the risk of recurrence and the risk of spread uh, can increase. Now, these usually present in the uh, uterine corpus, but they have also been seen uh, particularly in patients with uh, endometriosis uh, in other locations, the tube, the ovary, and elsewhere in the pelvis. So um, the differential diagnosis uh, in a case like this would include uh, various variations on endometrial polyps, adenomyomas, or atypical polypoid adenomyoma, Mazur's polyp, uh, other endometrial polyps, as we sort of illustrated in our uh, histologic presentation. Um, and uh, those, of course, if the stroma, stromal atypia is very subtle. Uh, obviously, in our case, we considered carcinosarcoma because uh, we had the P53 mutation in the area of overgrowth, which was not present in the low-grade uh, tumor areas. Um, and then other sarcomas, uh, particularly if there are heterologous elements, you have to con be concerned about uh, rhabdomyosarcoma, botryoid sarcoma, or even low-grade endometrial stromal sarcomas, uh, which can occasionally have glandular elements as well. Now, the histochemistry is uh, not usually uh, uh, highly uh, predictive, but uh, can be helpful in some circumstances in these uh, situations, because these tumors tend to be somewhat molecularly complex. There may be rather diffuse but low-grade amplification of MDM2. We had a little bit of overexpression in our uh, tumor, uh, TP53 mutations, and either high-grade tumors or the areas of stromal overgrowth, as we've illustrated, ATRX mutations or loss, DICER mutations, particularly if you've got heterologous differentiation and rhabdo, um, and then copy number gains uh, with uh, MYBL1, uh, particularly in the sarcomatous overgrowth areas. Uh, many of these tumors, both low and high-grade, have uh, FGFR2 or KMT2C, uh, mutations as well. Uh, those, those, those are not uh, frequently used in differential diagnosis. So our final diagnosis on today's case is uh, Mullerian adenosarcoma with sarcomatous uh, overgrowth. Um, and that uh, uh, is, uh, I, of course, in this situation, we did not have much myometrial invasion. Uh, she's an elderly patient, so she uh, will uh, get some close follow-up uh, looking for recurrence, but she may do very well. So we hope that you enjoyed that and certainly appreciate you joining with joining us. If you like this, geez, she, please hit that like button and uh, share it with uh, your colleagues or friends who may be similarly interested. We always welcome your comments and sincerely invite you to uh, subscribe to the channel so that uh, you'll uh, catch future releases, which we uh, continue to do on a fairly regular basis. So until next time, uh, thanks so much for joining me.